Television Jamaica covered it. They had some things to say about it. And I am going to play the clippings from Television Jamaica because more things came out during the discussion or the dialogue between the two hosts that I want to point out. Right. So without further ado, an Australian woman living in Guyana stirred controversy with a TikTok Get Ready With Me video where she shared her experiences as a travel vlogger in the country. Now, in the video, she made a provocative statement saying, and I quote, my favorite thing about Guyana is that I am the prettiest girl here. I'm not even tooting my own horn when I say that. It's a literal fact, end quote. Mad. So the remarks sparked a heated debate online. Um, many were upset, accusing her of perpetuating colorist ideals and notions. Uh, however, others agreed with her statement, calling upon Guyanese and Caribbean people to stop giving preferential treatment to white or fair-skinned people. The TikToker has since issued an apology and removed her initial video. Uh, let's take a look at the apology video. At the apology video. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, I would personally like to come on here and apologize. I am so, so sorry for everything that I have said about Guyana. I want to do a huge apology, a genuine sorry to the Guyanese people and especially the Guyanese women. I understand the gravity of the situation, the gravity of my words, and I just want to say I'm really, really sorry. I genuinely love Guyana and I love the Guyanese people. Um, so I don't want to make any excuses for my words, my videos, what I've said. I just want to hold myself accountable. And I've been seeing your videos, comments, posts about me. And I'm also glad you guys are holding me accountable for what I said. I think it's very important in this day and age that we do that with people who have a platform. So okay so that's the apology but the question remains is this a case of a white foreigner's ego running unchecked or is there a need to re-examine why she could so comfortably make a statement like that at all craigie mm -hmm. thoughts i don't know why i get me started in us let me sit down over here sir and throw it over to you mr Mr. C Mr. T. It's exactly what I said before. Um, social media gives people with a certain amount of following or people that are classified as influencers, it gives them a, almost a status of expertise that they never do anything to achieve. So when they express their opinion, people care. But a ridiculous opinion like that people shouldn't care about mm. you know i think that she has all right to think that she's the most beautiful person in the world mm. but it's lie uh, we see <laughs> we see, we see her. She, yeah, that's special. which is my opinion which is just i'm just a one person i'm, I'm just one person but that is my, that is my whole point like um it, it give them to give them too much power i do believe that um, because I don't know China, China, it shows that she clearly has little regard for the Guyanese people. And I think that immigration should have go for her. The Guyanese es women. Escort her, uh, yeah. immigration should have go for her and escort her to the airport and, mm -hmm. and make sure leave. Yeah, and it should be a woman too. A woman immigration officer to be like, come, 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 come. Yeah. And just, you know, like you said, escort her out. Yeah, cause, I mean, things like that, like, you, 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 you what, what, the... The message you are spreading is of no benefit to anybody, anybody living in Guyana, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So maybe you shouldn't be allowed to be there, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, I mean, I think you, I think that's a really good point. I do agree with you 100% that everybody should think that they're the most beautiful person in the world, whoever you are, right. I agree. Um, I do think, so that's an exclamation mark right there, bish bash bosh done. Mm -hmm. I think it does open, um, the conversation though too and something that we in Jamaica have to ask ourselves as well like do we afford preferential treatment to persons who are white or of a lighter hue of course um hue rather so that that's the conversation I I <clears throat> 
Tal Trude, it's very, very accurate. I don't think we have enough, we have two minutes left of this segment. I don't think it's enough time to really fully unpack that. Um, I travel the world, you know, my daughter is mixed race and her father is white. I travel the world, you know, straddling both sides, being a dark skinned woman, mm -hmm. just traversing the world and then being a, uh, traveling the world with perhaps a white person or traveling the world with a lighter skinned person. And there's definitely preferential treatment afforded to persons depending their times that I have gone in Jamaica that I would go to the bar to get something like a hotel and I'm like waiting to get served and I'm there like trying to get Nicola attention <clears throat> negative and then my daughter's father would walk up to the bar around the wherever and he stands up and he's like yes sir what can we get you and I'm like like you never see me here for 15 minutes I wait and you know so we need to check ourselves as well like this is a good opportunity for all of us to say do we afford those kind of have, are we the ones that facilitate other persons coming here thinking that perhaps they are more favorable, favorable treated more favorable than perhaps the Def rest of Definitely. So and we have to check ourselves. It's a, 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 a thing we are going to Jamaica a long time. And I, I think that it, it is very deep rooted. It is, it is a lack of um, self-worth. Ah. It, is, it is not understanding how valuable you are, how beautiful you are, and the contribution that you have to give to mm -hmm. society as a whole. Mm -hmm. and when, you, when you don't understand that, you automatically assume that somebody else from outside is mm -hmm. better, more valuable, more beautiful, mm -hmm. and can contribute more mm -hmm. yeah. to development yeah. than you can. Yeah. And it's just simply not so. Yeah. And it's not our fault either, you know, because we are, I mean, it's our fault, because at, at the end of the day, we all, we all have to take responsibility for what we think. We all have to emancipate our own selves from our own mental slavery but we are bombarded with European standards of beauty like it's something that is so, sometimes it's really hard to but, get away from but you have to be so, so careful because because it's not to say that people looking European are not beautiful as well mm. they are however it's, there, it's not because <laughs> they're, they're European, mm -hmm. but yeah, you have beautiful people yeah. from every race, yeah. from every ethnicity. Facts. It's just for, Facts. it's just, for, it's just for understand, you know. Facts. Your worth. Yeah. Then, you know what I mean? Yeah. Is is that thing? Yeah. What we, it, we need to talk, talk more. But when you hear conversations like I've heard people say, we spoke about this earlier. I've heard somebody say, I'm not even sure she's pretty or she's just brown, and I'm like. I was like, what does that, what does that mean? But, I was like, but hold on, but all right. I was like, but, what? But, 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 something I have to talk fast, right? Talk it, fast. It, it's, it's hard for me to talk these things, you know, because like, we really want to get yeah. and, and, and talk about it. Mm. Because like, like this, this that, that lady there, okay, she's all right. But you know, like, mm. she out of her for sight. Like, me don't think she doesn't know we're near a place where she can make a comment even remotely close to that. Can me that pass her and look again? Me don't know. I mean, I don't know, it's not a disrespect, it's just true. They, I think I think what we need to do is have a panel discussion, have persons from different hues having the conversation, seeing because everybody's struggle is a struggle. You know what I'm saying? And everybody yeah. have a different view. So it's not monolithic. So make we see it. I believe that we have to draw clearer lines when it comes to what is happening right here. The the boundaries are too open. They are too loose. There's no telling where it ends uh, where it begins who is in and who is out so we need to draw some clear lines that is what the vanguards need to do right we're not telling everybody to be like us people have a right to be what they want to be believe what they want to believe in and all that crazy stuff right same way we have a right to believe what we believe and we are the vanguards so we are not going to take certain naive risk without really examining what's really happening here. So let us try to dissect this right here. So they said that the remarks sparked a heated debate online and that many people were upset and they accused the lady of perpetuating colorist ideals and notions. My thing is this, she did not mention anything about color. So, are we projecting? Are they projecting? That's just a question to ask. Are they projecting? No, I believe that is good that they don't take that off of the table. Because that is what vanguards are not going to do. We're going to keep that on the table because historically, they might be right. But here's the thing about it. 
these same people who are upset at this lady they are the most colorist in the whole world the thing about it is that they get hurt when a european says something that they don't like when masters bash them and tell them hey you are not like me i am better than you it hurts them more than if another black person say it. because i've seen it all the time they practice colorists colorism against each other all the time and it doesn't get this much attention but this lady here say something and everybody get mad don't try to use the idea of history and she's a different people because i listen to you i pay attention to what you do what you post on a daily basis and i've been doing it for a long time now you can give a rat's about history about the ancestors about who you are you do not care about all of that until they remind you that you are not like them that is when you want to reach back a bit but at the same time you try to be cautious still because you still don't want to offend them right so you sit in at the foot of the table with googly eyes and a sad face begging telling them that hey we are humans just like you and that is what's happening here People of Guyana and the Caribbean, according to many complainers, need to stop preferential treatment to white or light-skinned people. But guess what? If they continue to be the source of financial power, financial freedom, then people are going to continue to give them preferential treatment. They have been the source, they have been leading the way since slavery. So until people stop doing a few things, and I will name a few of them, stop worshiping their white Jesus, stop worshiping and promoting their religion, stop ramming it down the mouth or down the throat of your kids, then these people will continue to get preferential treatment because you are breeding the same thing over and over again. Your youths are going to worship them and look up to them more than they will look up to their own because that is what you teach them the religion that we pushed down the throat of each other in the caribbean was beaten into us by slavery i hate to rip the bandit off but it needs to be ripped off you need to be told the truth people this is not new we see this script over and over again don't we see this over and over again so if a person gonna come out and use the same strategy as you it shows you Oh, they have no respect for you it shows you that they think you're weak they know you're weak they know you're not going to do anything she said that she would like to personally apologize to the people of guyana she said that she genuinely loved guyana and the guyanese people what does that mean what does that mean she loves the fact that all was found there and she liked the fact that the people of guyana are so naive or oh, she perceived them to be naive she perceived the Guyanese people as a type of people who can easily be tricked and manipulated because she already know that they glorified her she knows that she probably seen the churches around she see the reaction she know how she's treated she see that she gets special treatment from the local people that is why that is why she loved you guys I claim she loved you and that is why she loved Guyana right she continued, I don't want to make excuse for my words, my videos, what I've said. I just want to hold myself accountable. And I've been seeing your videos, your comments and your posts about me. And I am so glad that you are holding me accountable for what I said. How are the people holding her accountable? See, when they hold you accountable, they fire you. They destroy your life. They lock you up. They put you away forever. They cut off your source of income. They destroy your family. That is how they hold you accountable. You getting on social media as an individual, not even communicating with other brethren and sisters from around. You getting on there and you just firing off is not accountability. They do not fear that. You hear what you say? We love oil money. Okay, 
Ghana is also the fastest growing economy in the world and that is because of the recent oil discovery and you know if it's one thing we love okay it's some oil money if you are not affecting her money if you are not affecting her means of income her lifestyle then you are not holding her accountable she can care less she can care less and especially since we like to push their religion that they don't live up to we like to forgive and forget and turn the other cheek but when you violate them they take you out they keep hunting until they find you and take you out but you want to take their religion and live up to their religion more than they live up to their religion and they know this so that is why they have no issue doing it because they know how forgiven you are because you want to be accepted you want to be looked at as so good that people can't help but to accept you oh their hearts are so great they are so loving and kind and forgiving the world do not work like that people can kill less they will kill everything you love if it means they're going to get rich if it means they're going to get some money some of your own people will do that but these people right here are the masters no one has done it like them historically in a way where it impacts nations the entire world and end up getting many nations filthy rich no one has done it like them all these people out here are like small time criminals compared to these folks you're not going to see how people out there bashing her or dragging her you're not going to see that they breed that type of mentality where she's from what you see transcends generations she cannot just get rid of it she don't see nothing wrong with it her apology is not even an apology and this is why caribbean vanguards are necessary we must protect us we cannot leave it in the hand of the naive who believe in turn the other cheek love is love love is blind you can't help who you love we are all humans god love everyone type we cannot trust those type of people that type of belief is too dangerous too risky and has gotten too many people killed and enslaved those type of people are dangerous and we have listened to them for far too long so it's time for a new strategy they count on the mercy of the europeans like dogs they want all of us to sit around the table and wait for crumbs they are hoping that their master would drop some chicken leg on the ground that has a little bit of meat in it they want to remind their masters that hey your ancestors enslave us can you at least treat us good and love us they don't want real power their greatest dream is to be fully accepted by their lords they have been waiting for 200 years it's not going to happen if we pull together and do what we need to do regardless of them we would have been a lot further ahead now let's transition to the podcast television jamaica let's transition to television jamaica because they also expose a lot of things the lady sitting there said she said the question remains is this a case of white foreigners ego running unchecked or is there a need to re-examine why she could so comfortably make a statement at all and this is what i have to say about that there's nothing to examine it's all out there it's all in your face they know that they are doing it in your face and they do it intentionally but the reason they don't care about it is because they know you are coward they see you as coward all these questions about why she did it is laughable to them the vanguards aren't no cowards we still have the rebels we still have the revolutionists in the caribbean and guess what they're starting to see that your strategy hasn't been working we sat back we listened to you because you came with this idea that hey 
if we be like Jesus, if we be like Gandhi, if we be like MLK, then we will convince them to love us. Then we will get to where we need to get to. That is what you told us for the longest. But what we realize is that many of you are getting fat. Many of you are going over there sleeping in bed and doing all type of crazy stuff. You don't care about the children. You don't care about the people. You don't care about the community. Yes, you love the culture. We all love the culture. But the vanguards, we need to realize because somebody loved the same culture and loved the same flag as you, it doesn't mean that they want the same thing you want. The big part I want to point out here when we talk about drawing the lines, having a clear, refined boundary, knowing where the parameters are, this is a good example. The woman here, she said, it's not our fault either because they were talking about colorists and how we don't treat each other right. She says it's not our fault. She started to go in a direction, but then she remembered that she is with a white man and she got babies by a white man. So that is why I say you cannot serve two masters. The Africans and the Europeans are like oil and water. And I know they're pushing all equality now and one love, but you cannot push one love if you don't give me what you stole from me. What sense does that make? People only looking and listening to what sounds good. Yes, it sounds good. But look, you cannot push equality when you are light years ahead of me because of the theft and robbery, murder and rape that your ancestors did and pass on the wealth from that to your nation. So now you are the lenders all over. Is either one of two things. Either we're going to accept that we are simply slow people, that we are incapable and they are great, or we're going to accept history that we know happened. And we're going to accept that there are still people working with them and they're still doing their corruptness because we hear about it all the time every day. So she started in saying that is not our fault. But then she switched it up and said, I mean, it's our fault because at the end of the day, we all take responsibility for what we think. We all have to emancipate our own self from our own mental slavery. Ma'am, you talking about mental slavery, emancipating oneself from mental slavery, but you allow a descendant of the slave master to fertilize your egg. You are not in any position to talk about this. I can tell by the things you say and how you act and how you function that this is an uncomfortable subject for you and it should be. I cannot sit down and have this kind of conversation with people like you. See, you all got this thing as a joke and that is why we are in the position we are today. You got this thing as a joke. Look, I can only trust you up to 45%. I can only trust you up to 45%. It doesn't mean I don't look at you as if you're not a human. It doesn't mean that I want you to do bad. It doesn't mean that I hate you or anything, but I don't trust you. I cannot trust you. And she's going to prove it to you further on in this conversation. She said, but we bombard ourselves with European standards. Doesn't that sound like hypocrisy? You know who did it to us. You know who control everything. You know what's going on. But here you want to talk about bombard. Nah, that's you speaking your truth. You know that's how you feel. How are you going to say that about other people? Have you spoken to everybody else? Did they tell you this? No, this is what's inside of you that's coming out. You are speaking for yourself. She gave a story about her family. She said that... She traveled the world with her daughter who is mixed and her father who is white. And that she straddled on both sides, being a dark-skinned woman and just traversing the earth or traversing the world with white people or lighter-skinned people. No, don't try to squeeze lighter-skinned people in there, ma'am, is what I'm going to say. No, traveling the world with your white husband and your daughter. See, that is why sometimes I don't really trust what people say, especially like this. You got to understand, this is a spirit. This is not just flesh. 
whatever spirit dude have he don't put in her and her thinking is different the dna that's put inside of her makes her thinking totally different she cannot sit down and have a conversation with you a reasonable conversation with you about african people i know people argue about can somebody be pro-black and marry a european i don't deal with a light switch on and off i believe to a percentage you can be but you can only be trust up to a certain level it is what it is and you should understand that it doesn't have to do with everything else it just have to do with certain things you can only be trust up to this level we cannot have a honest conversation about our situation because you have chosen to marry into the family who have done what they have done to us worldwide so even if they directly had anything to do with it or not they don't want their people to not continue to rule ask any one of them and they'll tell you that they don't want their people to not continue to rule over everybody have you seen them come out and tell their people to pull out of africa to pay back the people of africa have you seen them come out to tell them to start reversing what was done in australia the americas another part of the world no these people they simply cannot find the blonde that they wanted and so they chose you these women they simply cannot get with the the man that they wanted so they chose you or you chose them but they are naturally attracted to their own kind when they see one of their own kind walk into the room the type that they are into they can't help it you will never ever ever satisfy them or make them feel as good as their own kind will because they know themselves and if you knew yourself though it will be the same way but you don't know yourself they know their self yeah so she talked about seeing the colorism when she traveled she gave a story about when she was in jamaica right and that's what they do like i said they take their 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 people and they bring them in we already chased them out the country they already still own a lot of stuff but they bring them in i heard people say hey this one sister told me me and my husband we're going to move back to jamaica we're going to buy up a bunch of land and stuff so you see how they're going to start taking things over again this kind of thing so this lady she's back there at the hotel and she said that the waitress or waiter kept ignoring her she was sitting there for 15 minutes and then her husband finally came around and the waiter went to him and said hey can we help you and she said that that was some form of colorism and that we need to do better and so forth so forth ma'am it starts with you what you're doing is colorism as well don't come tell me about love who you love and so forth you're not gonna fool me with that and tell me you couldn't find somebody you're not gonna fool me with that but it goes back to this i blame the men i blame us men because we are not respected because all we care about is goofing around and clowning around and, and, and putting on a show and entertaining people and kiki kiki the women don't respect us the children don't respect us we don't respect each other we don't respect ourselves but vanguards are going to fix that we are going to fix that it's going to happen so you because you are uncomfortable you're not going to get us to give up on the ancestors you're not going to get us to give up on wanting to work with each other across the caribbean and also over into africa and other parts of the world so you're going to get very uncomfortable get ready for it because we don't envy that we don't envy you in any way and your sisters love you black men you don't need to envy that in any way right some of them want to have their mixed baby and come around and try to show off on you because they think they're better than you you need to make sure that they can feel it that they are no way better than you no way them are the ones who would have sold you out big time near the end of the video she said that a lot more conversations probably need to be have about this i think what we need to do is have a panel discussion have persons from different hues having the conversation because everybody's struggle is that struggle and everybody have a different view so it's not monolithic 
What she's talking about here is what many Christian black people like to talk about. And that is why I say warriors know that the world don't work like that. You can't think like that when you're in battle. You're going to get hurt. You're going to get killed. Right. And because she don't know that there's a battle going on because she's living in La La Land. The vanguards have to make sure we protect our youths from her. People who listen to this and people who have children, you need to protect your children so that they don't get hurt out there in the world. She's talking about we need to bring all type of people at the tables to talk about this. And that is where the problem is. No, we need to figure this thing out. The vanguards, well, she, she can do that if she want, right? Because they've been doing that forever. For the past 200 years, they've been bringing everybody to the table and talking to everybody. And they've just been playing you like suckers. And they use women like this a man that think like her who can't do without the European woman they use them and their type of mindset to play the entire community and we see this happening far too long the, the one thing we have not really done since slavery is for vanguards outside of religion outside of this beating drum and singing and waiting for some invisible person to come and, and heal us because remember this all of the rebellions that happen all of the advances that happened had some type of physical work done with it. People had to actually get out there and do things, right? So outside of all that, we have not really had a, a real discussion leaving out these type of people right here out of it, right? So we have to really cipher through them, find out who they affiliate themselves with. We have to do research. We have to be intentional. We have to be smart. If you really want to turn this thing around, brethren across the Caribbean, across Africa, across the globe. Look the good thing about it. You see how their governments have relationship with each other. If a brother does a crime in the US and then he run to Jamaica, the Jamaican government gonna grab him and take him back to the US. In fact, that just recently happened. It also happened in Guyana as well, just recently. So the same way, there's a blueprint. We need to be the same way we need to be connected across the globe right it doesn't take a lot of us let all those xenophobes isolate themselves and stay right there in the messy water in the meantime we're building bridges across the globe so we can travel and we can do business we can see what needs to be done and we're going to do it all love no ego we can do it fully capable of doing it and we're going to do it Right? It's not going to be something that happened overnight. It's going to take time, but it's going to happen. It's going to happen. We need to look at Marcus Garvey and all of those who came before us. All the greats. Take the good out of what they did and acknowledge what they did wrong. And we need to make those adjustments and keep pushing forward. But anyway, this message, like I say, is not for the 90%. It is for the vanguards. It is for the few we are not going to agree upon everything, but as long as we agree upon the main things, and then when we have our conversation, we can straighten out the little things, right? We can argue about those other things, but in the meantime, we need to be moving forward, and forward we are moving.